Janice Christensen of Mercury Associates has some advice for new fleet managers that even experienced FMs can benefit from. Make use of associations and networking, such as MAFA. That's number one, uh, one of the best ways to learn about uh, this market, which is, is uh, a niche market and there really isn't um, a lot of educational material that you can uh, say, well, I went to college and I, you know, I majored in fleet management. Well, that just isn't the case so far. So to, to use a trade group like NAFA to learn, and then secondly, to use your um, affiliates. Use the people that are, are on the other side of the desk, from the fleet management companies, from the safety suppliers, and so forth, to use all of their years of experience to, to train you and to teach you how to be the, um, the educated fleet manager. One of the biggest areas that fleet managers are not taking um, advantage of cutting costs where they can, I would have to say it's probably a different area depending on if it's a corporate fleet versus a government fleet. So let me address corporate fleet first. I would say it's in the personal use area. It's probably it's a pet peeve of mine. Um, I think it's the most significant area where a fleet can reduce their costs by having their employees pay the fair share of operating the uh, company vehicle. It's a win-win situation for both uh, the individual, the driver, and for the company um, to have a uh, vehicle that meets the needs of a work vehicle, but also to have a vehicle that is a benefit um, for, and can be used for personal use. So what I'm saying is that rather than imputing income and just having the employee merely pay taxes on that income, to have the employee actually contribute uh, money towards the cost of operating the vehicle. And if that's done, the company vehicle can always be competitive with any other kind of, of um, transportation, so including reimbursement. So that's that's would be number one on the corporate side. On the government side, I would say um, the, the the concept of running vehicles into the ground and thinking that. Uh, the vehicles are free after you purchase the vehicles and then you keep them for 10 years and you think after so many years they're free. And uh, through a uh, wide variety of analysis that Mercury Associates has done in that area, I mean, we can empirically prove that running the vehicles into the ground is not the proper avenue for government fleet managers to take because after a certain period of time, as you know, Janice, your maintenance costs go up. And so once you're, as your maintenance costs increase and you add in the cost of uh, the downtime of uh, the vehicle because of it failing in mechanical uh, problems and situations that the least expensive way of operating the vehicle is, is, is not just to run it forever. So that, I, I, would, I would say to, to look at that area as well. And then probably maybe secondary to that and the government side is to look at alternative ways of, of financing uh, your vehicle. So um, only because it's very hard to, to come up with funds every month, uh, every year uh, in order to to finance the replacement of the vehicle. So you inherently will see older vehicles in a government fleet, which, which just uh, tends to end up be more, to be more costly.